Stay all day. Stay all day. Tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue putting yourself out there, moving yourself to action, doing the work every single day, even when the success you have expected to achieve as a result of your efforts has yet to be achieved. You can't even find it. You don't even see a hint of it. You want to keep going. And on top of all that. We got to put this actually in motion because it's good to have all this stuff. But if you're not doing anything with it, what does it matter? Right. So you need the personal initiative to go get an energy that will move you to action to be proactive in life, to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. We put all these together, all four of these discipline, confidence, mental toughness, personal initiative, all of this into one concoction that comes out perfectly. And what you get is a mindset, a method, a philosophy, a book, a show master class that is called work on your game my name is dre baldwin also known as dre all day and you need to give yourself congratulations for making the excellent decision of being here today because a great life is made up of a series of great decisions you made another one right now today's topic is how to make people remember you i think everybody on some level wants to be remembered in life whether you're remembered by your friends and family remembered by the people whom you have touched Remember by a whole bunch of people because you got a whole bunch of fans or you're putting yourself out there publicly. But every one of us has an ego, a sense of self. So when I say ego, I'm talking to the Simon Freud scientific definition of ego. Just your sense of self of who you are as a person, what you're about as a person, what you represent and what you want, how you want other people to feel about you. That's the ego that I'm talking about here. And we all egotistically want to feel like we matter to someone else. I don't think there's anyone listening to me who doesn't want to feel like they matter at all. Everybody wants to feel like they matter on some level to some population of other people. Now, while some people want to be remembered by more other people than others want to be remembered by, some people just want to be remembered by their family. While some people, they want to be as famous as, I don't know, the Nike logo or Tiger Woods or something like that. Everyone wants to be remembered on some level by somebody. Today is about how to make people remember you based on the way that you conduct yourself through your life, not through your daily activities. Doesn't matter what you do. You could be doing some forward front facing work that naturally draws people's attention once they see that you're good. Or you could be doing something that's more of a behind the scenes type of thing with your life. Either way, you still want people to remember you because there are many there are many, many upsides and benefits to having relationships or people knowing who you are and having a positive vision, positive image of who you are as a person. And there are hardly any downsides to that. All right. So relationships and people having a positive thing to say about you or having a positive thought about you. This is one thing that it's kind of like vegetables. Right? You can't have too much of it. Unlike something like, let's say, candy, you can enjoy it, but too much of it can start to be a problem. Vegetables, you can't you basically can't eat too many vegetables. Solid relationships, positive relationships with people who think highly of you are there's no downside to having more of them. So however many you have right now, if you were to 10x that number, uh, your life will not start to get worse at some point. There's not some inflection point where things start to go downhill because you had too much of it, like eating candy or fried foods. This is something that you can have more and more of. So getting more people to remember you, just take this, take everything I'm gonna give you here in today's class to the max, as far as you can, because it will only make your life better. Point number one, today's topic, once again, is how to make people remember you. First thing you gotta do is get personal. If you want people to remember you, here's a simple way to do it. Make sure you remember them. I mean, who's, who is gonna go out of their way to remember a person or even let anyone know that they remember someone who didn't even take the time to remember them. I mean, we all know the golden rule. Do unto others as you want others to do unto you. So if you don't remember another person, you remember their preferences. You're not listening to what they're saying. You're not really paying attention to them when they're talking to you. You're not showing them a certain level of respect. Why would you expect to get that from that person? If you're not giving it to them, why would you expect them to give it to you? It's a very simple concept, right? That if you want to be remembered, make sure you remember other people. But this very simple concept is rarely executed on. Who listening to me right now has in the last 30 days had a conversation with someone who you could tell it was obvious they were not really listening to you. I mean, they heard you when you were talking, but they weren't really listening. 
They don't really remember anything that you said in the conversation. They weren't really that interested in you. Maybe they're more interested in talking about themselves or what they could possibly get from you or through you, but they weren't really interested in you as a person. And you could feel it even while the conversation was going on. How many of you in the last 30 days have met someone who insisted that they were going to do A, B, and C later on after your initial meeting and you have not heard from that person since and you doubt you ever will? Any of you ever met somebody like that? How many of you have met someone and told them your name, maybe told them some things about you that are important to you, and they gave you the same information about themselves and you remember the information about them, their name, their occupation, that they have kids, what they do for a living. But then the next time you saw them, you remembered all that stuff about them, but they remembered nothing about you. They might have forgot your name, forgot what you do for a living, didn't remember that you had kids, didn't remember that you are a, a vegan. So that all they, they brought you to a steakhouse. How many of you ever met somebody who fit that description? It's just clear that they just were not paying any attention to you whatsoever, even though it seemed like they were listening to you. They actually, you could tell by their actions that they weren't. Any of you ever met anybody like that? Well, let me tell you something. This is one of the ways that you can be remembered, but this is not a way that you, you don't want to be remembered this way. All right. I'm talking about, I could have said in the title, I could have said remembered positively in life. Maybe I'll put that in the title. But when I say how to be remembered, I don't mean just do anything to get remembered. I mean, you could, Adolf Hitler was remembered. All right, everybody knows who he is, right? But just because you're remembered doesn't necessarily get remembered in a positive way. So how do you be remembered positively? Get personal and remember things about other people and they will notice and remember that you remembered about them. When you notice details about other people, you remember their names, you maybe you remember the names of their kids or of their spouse or something that's important to them, even though you might not think it important, but they think it's important. So you remembered it. You made it important because it was important to them and you're developing solid people skills. They will remember the fact that you remember. And now you got a spot in their mind simply because of that. All of us as humans, we are all so deep into our own worlds that we don't consider other people any further than when we're thinking about what this other person can do for us or what we can get from this person or what we can get through this individual. And that selfishness is what leads to a lot of people causing themselves. They bring it on themselves that they don't get remembered or that they fail at building solid relationships. They fail at being political. Any of you who hasn't heard my master classes on politics, I'll refer you to the, the episodes in a moment. But what I want to tell you about being political means politics just means doing things to protect or further your own interests. All right? And everyone who's listening to me right now, you have personal interests. So to do things to protect your interests or to further your interests, that's all politics is. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with politics. So any of you who's ever bad mouthed politics or you think politics is a bad thing, politics is not a bad thing. Now, you might think governmental politics, like the business of politics, the way that it's become like a, it's been commodified, you might not like that, but that's not the kind of politics I'm talking about. I'm talking about the raw definition of politics, which is doing things to protect it further your own personal interests. If you don't do things to protect it further your own personal interests, I guarantee you nobody else will. And I told you in Masterclass number 747, why and how to be political as soon as possible. And also way back, Masterclass number 131 from 2016, how to make politics start working in your favor. So any of you who doesn't know about politics, you need to get good at it. One thing that will help you in politics is getting personal. Even though politics can be looked at as business on some levels, making it personal will make it a whole lot easier for you to do business. Everyone here who does any type of business and everybody here is in some form of business. How many times in your life, in your career, have you been able to create an opportunity for yourself or get something done just because you had some type of personal relationship with someone who could help you get it done? Not necessarily or maybe not at all based on the merits of your skills, the merits of your work or your resume or because you were necessarily better than whatever other options that person may have had. But simply because you had a personal relationship with a certain individual, there are certain things you were able to get done because of it. How many times has that happened in your life? Notice that the question I'm asking you is not has it happened or if it happened. I'm asking you how many times has it happened? Because I guarantee you it's happened more than once. Now, if I'm lying, somebody tell me I'm lying. If I'm inaccurate and everything you've ever gained in your career has been just 100% based on the merits of your skill set, bullshit, then you let me know. Exactly. 
But if you ever made anything happen or had something happen for you or with you simply because you had a personal relationship with someone who had the power to open some doors for you, to you know, make some things happen for you, to push some buttons for you that you otherwise couldn't push yourself, make some calls that you couldn't have made yourself and you got you were able to move yourself forward or create some opportunities because of that personal relationship. You just count on how many times that's happened because I guarantee it's happened. I guarantee it's happened more than once. And if you continue to do what I'm telling you here, which is get personal in life, remembering other people, which will make them remember you, this will happen more often. Most of us, again, the point that I was making, so many of us are so deep in our own worlds that we don't think of other people unless we're thinking about what we can get from them or what we can get through them. And let me give you a hint. The same way that you can read that energy coming off of other people, other people can read that same energy coming off of you. So if you ever been around somebody, you could tell they were just trying to use you to see what they could get out of you. If you've ever been that person, other people are thinking the same thing about you and talking behind your back the same way you were talking about their back. So just talking behind their back. So make sure you're not committing any of these errors that you notice very easily in other people. They notice them in you as well. So most people always, most people come across, most people who you come across will think like this a lot in their lives, but it doesn't mean you have to. Uh, you don't have to do what you see other people doing. As I told you a couple days ago, everything in life ain't for everybody. So you don't have to follow it just because you see, quote unquote, everybody doing it. Learn to, let me give you some simple tactics here. Learn to remember people's names. All right, A person's name is the most valuable thing that they have. It's the one thing about them that most of the time doesn't change. Now, sometimes people change their names or they come up with some nickname or something like that. But for the most part, a person's name, they pr pretty much got it for life, right? So remember a person's name. All right, it's a very personal thing. And once somebody tells you their name, if you forget their name, all right, you may have cost yourself a potential relationship just by forgetting that person's name. Remember people's names. It's a very simple thing to do. It doesn't take a whole lot of energy and it shows that you're paying attention. Uh, if you remember, forget somebody's name, then they're going to note that you're not, you weren't paying attention or that you're not the type of person who pays attention. And that could lead them to just deciding to not even go any further with you, even though you may have plenty of great merits aside from that. Second thing, notice small things about people that make them unique. This is another thing that can help you get personal with individuals. Notice the small things. The big things, everybody can notice. Notice little things that are not so obvious that the person may not even be talking about, but may matter a whole lot to them. This may not be something that they put on front street, something that they put, they don't put it on a billboard in front of them everywhere that they go, but it matters to them and it makes them unique from other people. When you notice something like that, people will notice you as someone who pays attention to detail and they will remember you when you do that. How about knowing a person's preferences? This goes right along, along the same lines as that. Knowing someone's preferences. You know somebody doesn't drink alcohol, don't offer them a toast. Right, if you know someone is a, a vegan or a vegetarian, don't bring them to a steakhouse. Know what people actually prefer. Know what people enjoy. Know some preferences of theirs, whether you get it directly from them, whether you got to go online and do some research, whether you got to bribe somebody who's close to them to get more information. These are all getting personal. These are all the things that you would do when you're getting personal. And these investments will pay off in the long run, especially with someone that you want to do business with or someone you want to build a long term relationship with. Listen, when a person is talking. We're still on point number one here today. How to make people remember you. When a person's talking to you, listen. Don't just take the time as a, a breather to think about what you're going to say next or think about how you're going to react to what they said or tell them how they were wrong or contradict their point. Listen when another person is speaking. Listening is a skill that a lot of people unfortunately do not have. Pay more attention to other people than you do to yourself. How about that one? You ever been around somebody who just did not pay attention to other people. Everything they talked about, everything they said, everything they did, you could tell their only focus was on themselves. You ever know anyone who fit that description? All right, make sure it's not you. Pay more attention to other people. When you're a confident individual, I talked about this in my book on confidence called The Super You, also my chapter in my book, Working Your Game on Confidence. When you are fully confident in yourself, you don't have to worry about you. You don't have to focus on you so much because you know you're good. You know that you are taken care of. Therefore, because you know you're taken care of and you don't have to be so self-conscious and focused on you, you can focus your energy on other people. And that energy comes off as a high level of confidence, a high level of boldness that draws other people to you. Why does it draw other people to you? Because you are giving them energy. When you give other people energy, they will give you energy back. When you keep all your energy for yourself as a hoarder, 
then nobody else is going to give you energy because you're not giving any out. That's the way that it works. That's how confidence actually draws people to you. Confidence is a magnet that draws other people to want to be around you. So pay more attention to other people. All of these things go a long way in making a positive impression on other people. Point number two. Today's topic is how to be remembered. Be memorable. Now, you want to be remembered, be memorable. Isn't that simple enough? How do you do it? That means to be or do something that makes you stand out from other people. Now, you follow everything I told you on point number one. That, those are several ways that you can be memorable, but you can go a step further and make yourself. All right, so aside from what you're doing with and through other people, make yourself someone who is worthy of being paid attention to. So ask yourself a couple questions. What do I do well? In what way do I and can I affect other people's lives and situations? What do I offer the world that makes other people want and need to have me around? Did I give you those three questions again? What do I do well? In what way do I and can I affect other people's lives and situations? What do I offer the world or could I offer the world that makes people need and want to have me around? When you come up with answers to these questions, now you know some ways you can make yourself memorable. Now, why is each one of these questions all about, it's all, kind of all about how other people are going to perceive you? Why, do these, why are these questions about being memorable, memorable about how other people perceive you? Because you must remember that human beings are driven by self-interest. Human beings are not driven by uh, altruism for the most part, generally speaking. Human beings are not driven by, you know, what can I do that would contribute to the greater good? Human beings are not driven by personal sacrifice. What can I give up for myself in order to help everybody else? Human beings are not driven by that. Now, does do any of those things give us the warm and fuzzies? Yes. Do those things sound good? Absolutely. Do they play well on social media when you do something altruistic and you make sure everybody knows about it? Of course. But human beings on a basic level, as a general rule, are driven by self-interest. Therefore, if you want to get people to do things for you, do not appeal to their mercy or gratitude. Appeal to their self-interest. How do you appeal to another person's self-interest? Show them what you do well. Show them in what ways you can affect their life and their situation. Show them what you can offer them that they absolutely need, they absolutely want, and will be willing to pay for. Those are self-interest indicators. When you can show people something that will help them do what they want to do and get what they want to have, they'll give you whatever you want. So you got to kind of take yourself out of your own world and think the way that they would be thinking. Think like another person. We call that empathy, to feel what another person would be feeling. Not just to feel for them, but to feel like them and feel with them. Make yourself interesting to other people in these ways and other people will have no choice but to remember you. Point number three. Today's topic is how to be memorable. Remember the law of contrast. Always remember, as I told you in Masterclass 1025, the opportunity is in the opposites. I told you before that when everybody is anxious and nervous and scared, we just talked about this a couple days ago, you be calm and relaxed and poised and people will follow you simply because of the contrast. Simply because everybody else is out of control and not knowing what to do, as long as you show up as the person who seems calm, collected, relaxed, poised, unbothered by the situation, other people will follow your lead simply because you're different from everybody else there. You stand out just by being different from everyone else. So if you want to create opportunity for yourself in life, even if you're not the best at what you do, even if you may not be so highly skilled and you look around, there's a crowd of people around you and you're wondering how you could ever make yourself stand out from everybody else. Just look at what everybody else has in common and somehow, some way, situate yourself to be the opposite of what, whatever you notice that is in, everyone else has in common and you will stand out just by default. It's not even by default. It's just by you set it up to make it look like you're standing out by default, but it was actually by design. You see that? That's the law of contrast. There was a TV show called The Office that some of you may have watched. And this is one of the few TV shows that I ever watched, but The Office was actually very funny. And there was this one episode where 
this, these guys, they worked in a, a paper company. They sold paper to offices and things like that. So believe it or not, there's actually industries for this stuff. Even though the office was a fictitious story and company, Dunder Mifflin was a Dunder Mifflin was the name of the company in the office. Even though it was fictitious, this, these things really happen. So these people are working in this paper company. They, all they do is sell sell paper orders to companies and you no know, land contracts and service the accounts and things like that. So one day, this cute girl comes into the office and she sells handbags. And she asks the manager, hey, can I just set up in one of these empty offices you have here and I can maybe sell some handbags to your staff. When they get a moment, they can all come in, talk to me, I'll show them what I have and maybe sell them some handbags. And the office manager of the company in the TV show, the office says, sure, you can set up in this office right here. So this girl sets up in this office, hoping to sell some handbags, but she's a really attractive female. Now, there are a bunch of men who work in the office. So throughout the course of the day, while all these guys are you know, at work, they're all noticing this girl and they all, one at a time, they all take their chances to go into the office where the girl's selling the handbags and they don't really want to buy the handbag. They just go in there to try to talk to the girl to you know, lay their game down, whatever game they have or lack of game. Most of them have no game whatsoever. So they all go try to talk to the girl. They're not really trying to buy any handbags and it doesn't work. They all strike out trying to talk to this girl over the course of the day. Now, finally, near the end of the day, there's this one guy who worked in the office. His name was Jim. Now, Jim was one of, the, one of the main characters, I guess you could say, on the show, The Office. They're all kind of the main character. But Jim is one of the main characters. Finally, at the end of the day, Jim sits there and he's watching as the whole parade of men who work in the office go in there, try to talk to the girl, fail. Go try to talk to her, fail. They're all striking out. Finally, at the end of the day, Jim goes into the office where this girl is selling her handbags. And he says to her, look, I am not going to buy anything from you. I just want to learn. I want you to teach me everything I need to know about these custom handmade handbags that you're selling. Because the girl apparently had made her own handbags and she sewed them by hand and all this stuff. He said, I just want to learn. Just tell me everything that I need to know about these handbags that you made. He came in apparently with no agenda. Now, did he actually have an agenda? Of course he did because he found a girl attractive just like everybody else did. But what did Jim do? Jim exercised the law of contrast. He noticed how all the other men went in there with their tongues hanging out of their mouths, trying to lay their game down to the girl, and they all failed. So he said, all right, I'm going to do the exact opposite of that. I'm not going to go in there looking like I'm trying to get a date. I'm not going to go in there and try to lay any game down with this girl with any pickup lines. I'm going to go in there and do the exact opposite of all these guys. And that's exactly what he did. And he ended up, I believe he at least got, a, got himself a coffee date with the girl, whatever he considered to be success. Now... Did it matter that the girl was maybe probably more attractive to Jim than she was any of the other guys there just based on looks alone? Did that matter? Yes. Did it matter that Jim was probably the best looking guy of all the guys who came into the, that room to talk to the girl that day? Did that matter as well? Yes. But at the same time, Jim supercharged his natural advantages by utilizing the law of contrast to make himself stand out from everybody else in there. And the girl responded to them. So sometimes in life, ladies and gentlemen, you may or may not be able to stand out by just doing what you think you do well. Maybe Jim could have got the girl's phone number just by looking good, but he looked better than all the other guys in there. I don't know if he was that looking, good looking of a guy in a, a world vacuum, but compared to the other guys in there, the law of contrast is working in Jim's favor already. So sometimes just by your natural abilities, you may be able to make yourself stand out, but sometimes you might need to do a little bit more because... Maybe you're in a room where all the guys are pretty good looking guys and you're all trying to talk to the same girl. How do you make yourself stand out from all the other guys in there when they're all looking good? They all are physically attractive. She could say, she said, you know, all these guys are cute. I don't know which one I like, which one I'm going to take my pick of because they're all coming my way. You're going to have to do something extra to make yourself stand out. And the smart strategy in that situation is to create contrast by making yourself clearly unique from everybody else. Look at what everybody else is doing and do the opposite. So those of you who are listening to me who maybe you find yourself in a situation where everyone is highly skilled at what you do, whatever the thing is you're doing, whatever you're involved in, everybody's highly skilled. You're not quite sure you're very skilled compared to anybody else there. Maybe everybody else is more skilled than you. How the hell are you going to make yourself stand out? Well, what most people do and which what, what you should not do is to try to be better than everybody. Let me see if I can just prove that I'm better than everybody else. I just got to be more 
good than everybody. More skilled, more talented, produce more results. I just got to be better than everybody else out there. First of all, that's exhausting. Second of all, you may not be able to do it no matter how hard you work. And third, listen, somebody just, third, going along with the second point, somebody just might be better than you. All right? You may not be able to be better than everybody, even if you try. But if you notice what everybody else has in common and you situate yourself strategically to be the opposite of that, you create a contrast that makes yourself stand out better. Now, let me say that. Let me back up. Makes yourself stand out, comma. Different is better than better. Different is better than better. There's a book out there called How the World Sees You, written by an author by the name of Sally Hogshead. Yes, that's a real ass name. Sally Hogshead. Go find that book and read it where she explains how to be different and separate yourself from the crowd rather than trying to be better because the bottom line is only one person could be the best. So how do you make yourself stand out if you're not that one? Be different. Anybody can be different. Not everybody can be best. The smart strategy in any situation is create that contrast. It takes less energy to make a clear difference between you and everyone else. Let's recap today's class, which is how to make people remember you in life. Since all of us want to be remembered on some level, today is about how to make people remember us no matter who you are, where you are, what you do. Number one, get personal. You want people to remember you, make sure you remember them. It's a simple concept that is rarely executed on because most of us are so narcissistic and so focused on ourselves, so self-conscious that we don't give any energy to other people. So you'll stand out if you become a person who does this. Remember names. Notice small things about people. Notice people's preferences. Listen when they speak. Pay more attention to others than you do yourself. These all go a long way in making a lasting impression on another person. Number two, be memorable. Be or do something that makes you stand out from everyone else. Now, while everything in point number one will do this for you, you can go a bit further and ask yourself, what do I do well? In what ways do I affect other people's lives and situations positively? What do I offer the world that makes people need to have me around? Remember that human beings are driven by self-interest. They are not driven by altruism. They are not driven by mercy. They are not driven by gratitude or charity. Human beings are driven by what they can get out of a situation. If you position yourself as something that produces results for others, they will remember you just because you are serving their self-interest. Point number three. The law of contracts. Always remember the opportunities and the opposites. I told you, when everyone's anxious, nervous, or scared, be calm and relaxed. People will follow you simply because you're different from everybody else. On a TV show, The Office, all these guys went in there and tried to talk to the pretty girl, and they all tried the same techniques, and they all failed until one guy came in and did the exact opposite, and he succeeded. Maybe because she liked him anyway, but probably because he did something different from everyone else. The smart strategy in any situation when you are competing against a whole bunch of people who may be just as good, if not better than you, is to not try to be better than them, which is exhausting and it may be impossible, but to be different from them. Not everybody can be better. Only one person can be the best. Everybody can be different. Work on your game. Dre all.